Welcome to Dent Reviews. This is going to be part two of my in-depth review of the JDS Labs C5 headphone amplifier. Um, I've talked to you about all the specifications and some of the audio details, and I'm just going to go into a little bit more about the uh, features and what I like about this amplifier. First is that at the time of ordering, and currently, um, you can get your cases engraved for free. That is Stereotomy from the Alan Parsons Project. I sent John an image, and he was able to engrave that, laser engrave, I believe, onto the case. And then on the other side, I, I had him engrave the logo. So that's one really nice service. That's an awesome, awesome bonus to be able to customize your amp for free. I don't know many companies that do that. This is another case that I have, and you'll find that uh, I have a lot of cases here. Um, I turned this one into an AB switch, which I'll go into that in another video, but has his uh, logo on one side and just the nice bluish gray finish on the other. And then this case is also his logo on one side, and then the Eye in the Sky logo, again from Alan Parsons Project, which looks awesome. And then this one here, blank on one side with kind of a white finish, and he actually did a custom album art from one of my personal albums, which I really like the way that came out. It's just a, a black and white silhouette of me, um, and that's one of my album covers, so that is really cool. These are all like a, an aluminum metal, and uh, they're very lightweight, they're very tough. He's improved the finish over time, and this black amp is my regular daily amplifier. I've used this for a long time, and as you can see, it's been holding up very well. Very happy with that. Um, the face plates look really nice. They're kind of a brushed aluminum. And then the face plates of the silver aluminum, also brushed. And then, as you'll see, they also come with rubber bumpers. I've put those on the bottom and top. I believe it comes with four, but again, I have a couple cases. I put them on the bottom and top of this one amplifier so that I can set it on a surface and it doesn't slide. And then I can set an iPod on the top of that, and the iPod doesn't slide on the device. And as a size reference, that is an iPod Classic. And it, it looks like this thing was made for an iPod Classic. It's almost the exact dimensions of the thing. It's very, very nice. So, that's that. And just to show you it connected, um, you would plug your 3.5mm jack into the source input. And then you would... I have this small cable from BTG Audio, which I love. It's got a Nutri connector, a flexible cable. It's very, very nice. And then you plug it into your iPod, like so. If I can remember which way it goes. And then what I like about that is because it's flexible, you can move this around and it's not yanking on any jacks, it's not straining the jacks. And look how nice that fits. I mean, that is just fancy dancy. I mean, that's just very nice, very small, very compact. Um, I highly recommend this cable from BTG Audio. Brian over there makes awesome, affordable cables for a nice cable. You get a good quality cable. Um, it's very low profile dock connector. I hate the dock connectors that stick out really far. I had a FIO, if that's how you say it, cable. It fell apart because the stress on the, the dock connector was just a little bit too much in normal use. This one seems to be holding up really well. I think it's because it's light and flexible, so there's no strain on there. Um, the Nutri connector is actually custom from, from BTG Audio. He, he saws these off and heat shrinks them, so they're really, really small. The normal B, uh, sorry, the normal Nutri connector is about that long, and then the cable will come out. So that's really nice. I like this. Very low profile. You probably don't want to put a lot of stress on this, but again, it's designed for just a point-to-point -point amplifier connection. Very nice. Uh, another size comparison. This is the Fuse. This is my regular MP3 player. Uh, I'm using my iPod Touch, so I can't really show you that, but I'll try to get a picture and throw it in here. Um, but basically that comes off a little bit further and what you need for the iPod Touch is an adapter because the lightning adapter is the new style and you would basically put the lightning adapter on the 30 pin adapter like that you would plug it into the source connector again and with the iPod Touch unfortunately it's a longer iPod it comes out to about here so you do have you know more sticking out so I'm not really happy with that, but it does it does work well. I mean, if you're sitting on a table with the amplifier and you have your iPod lying on it, it works fine perfectly. It's really only when you start to try to carry them around 
that's when it starts to be kind of cumbersome. The iPod Classic, you can easily carry that around all as one piece, and it's just like a little brick. Um, but with the touch, it's just kind of large. So, anyway, it is what it is. Um, I highly recommend the C5. It's an excellent little amplifier. It's just a very high-quality reference sound with very nice aesthetics, a very clean design, good feature set, customizable artwork. It's very affordable in, in the... Um, comparison of other amplifiers of the same quality it's about hundred and eighty nine dollars I believe which is extremely affordable and the new C5D which is the same exact amplifier essentially with a DAC chip which is a digital audio converter if you're not familiar with that that thrown into the same case to give you a reference DAC as well I believe that starts at about 250 I believe so for not much more you can get a DAC in there if you need it so I highly recommend either of these um, the amplifier on its own is great just a great amplifier and I've been extremely happy with it so that's that um, let me go into the inside of this because I do want to show you what it looks like inside just to make this a really thorough review just get a small screwdriver so get out the screws here you only have to remove one faceplate to remove the circuit board so you take off the faceplate and see, you just slide it out it's in like a little railed um, groove in this case I don't know if you can see that this is a very very beautiful design um, I think personally it's got a nice layout you got the battery you got the switch you got a charger um, you got your bass boost you got your headphone output headphone input you got your volume rocker here um, you can see all your audio um, chipsets and whatnot it's just a very nice layout um, <clears throat> I won't tell you what that is it's a secret but basically it is uh, very clean very uncluttered and um, it's just a really well designed circuit with nice aesthetics so I just wanted to show you that give you an example now what you can do is you can um, you can modify this case it's really nice because it's a sleek rectangular case and what I've done is I've made my own switch and just to show you how to put this back you slide it into the grooves and it goes right down in make sure all the jacks and everything are sticking out properly and you put on the faceplate and you screw it back in. So I've discussed all the sound properties and, and the details and specifications, but how does that translate into what you actually hear? How does it sound at the end of the day when you take your trusty iPod, plug it in, put your headphones in, and listen to music? Well, in my experience, it sounds incredible. Um, this is a very reference amplifier, not only in specifications, but in sound. Um, I have a couple other amplifiers that I compare it to. I have a very high-end Apogee sound interface that I use to record my own music on my laptop. I have a Denon AVR998 receiver. Um, I have a series of iPods, probably five or six different iPod models from the newest generation touch to the classic to the nano. I have an iPad. I have a, a Sans, a Fuse. Um, I have access to um, some M-Audio interfaces. I have access to... Uh, a couple different things. Needless to say, I have a lot of different amplifiers. Um, they all have their own specific traits and sound, but essentially the more reference of the interfaces that I have, such as the Apogee, are kind of my benchmark. The JDS Lab C5 holds up perfectly against the Apogee interface. Um, what I did is I actually designed an AB switch here, which has an input for your earphones and two inputs for your um, sources. And this is a passive uh, switch so that there's no components inside, nothing to degrade the signal and when you switch this it's discreetly um, completely isolating the audio path so you're going from one to the other and what I've able, been able to do with this is compare my devices now with the Apogee and the uh, C5 I can't tell a difference in sound quality um, if I volume match them and do a blind test where I listen to the C5 and say my iPod with the uh, sorry, my C5 and iPod compared to um, my Apogee. The line out of my iPod going into this sounds identical to the Apogee. I cannot tell a difference. I, I have a very discerning ear. I have years of practice mixing and mastering music. And most of the people that know me consider me to be able to hear things that most people wouldn't be able to hear. And even then, I can't hear a difference between these two devices. Now, that's not a bad thing for the C5. That's a good thing. Um, Apogee is, is renowned for having some of the highest quality sound interfaces on the market and this thing sounds as good as the audio output of that. So in other words, this is as reference as one of the highest 
quality interfaces in the audio world. So I would say that this is extremely referenced. Now, comparing it to some other devices, this is an improvement. For instance, if you were to plug this into a device that had a little bit of a noise problem, um, like a hissing or or some other aberration in the sound quality, adding the C5 with the line-out connection of that device would bypass that internal amplifier and give you a much cleaner signal because the C5 is dead silent and has high quality audio chain. So, in that case, this is a noticeable improvement over a lot of devices. Um, I find with the Fuse, again, there's no difference in audio quality between the Fuse and, say, the iPod with the line out dock. However, at high volumes there is because the Fuse does have a little bit more noise. And unfortunately, the Fuse doesn't have a line out dock. Um, there may be a line out dock special, but this isn't made anymore. So, for all intents and purposes, I just use the headphone output and amping or double amping the headphone output. Um, doesn't ruin the sound quality. It actually maintains its reference quality with the C5, but amped or not, this does have a little bit of a noise floor increase above the iPod at high volume. So with certain quiet music, I would say the iPod has the win, um, especially with the C5, but the fuse in most situations at normal volumes, that noise floor is low enough that it's inaudible. So in that case, I can't really differentiate between the two. Um, nonetheless, Again, that says a lot about the C5 because you're plugging the C5 as a secondary amplifier and it's not degrading the sound quality at all. That means it's maintaining a perfect signal. So basically, um, that's a very good feature because by keeping that signal quality clean and perfect, that's giving you reference quality whether the device is poor and this is improving it or the device is already good and this is giving you additional gain without any sound aberration so you're getting uh, more flexibility you can have a finer volume control on your device if it doesn't already have one um, you can have additional power to drive a harder to power headphone uh, for instance the fuse in the iPod might not be the best at driving um, something like the ER4S at high volumes uh, I'd say in general they are but there are some quiet tracks where the ER4S is pushed to vo max volume on those devices or the HD600 or the you know, HE series of headphones or, or, you know, something that is a high-powered, high impedance and requires more power, you know because of that that this is going to give you that extra power you need, but you're not losing any of the quality that you already have. And in lots of cases, you're gaining quality by eliminating noise, getting perfect channel balance, and just getting the best reference signal path that you can. So, I would give this amplifier an A+, as one of the highest quality portable amplifiers I've heard. It's very, very nice, very good form factor, excellent sound quality. I just can't say enough about it. It's just highly recommended. Now, last thing, but not least, um, I wanted to go into when discussing this amplifier is the company, JDS Labs. Uh, JDS Labs is run by John Sieber. He's he's somebody that I've I've talked to a lot, and I can't say enough about the customer service over at their company. Um, their goal in the company isn't just to make money. You can tell when you have um, interaction with them that they care about taking care of the customer, they care about having pride in their products and delivering the highest quality that they can at the low, most affordable price that they can. And for anyone that's purchased something from JDS Labs and had any interaction with them, it's it's just basically it's obvious that that's the case. So I highly, highly commend them for their customer service. They're there to take care of you to give you a great experience and basically to, to get you at the end of the day sitting down with a high quality amplifier and listening to awesome music. And that's what every company should do. Unfortunately that's not the case. But in this day and age to have a company that is like that um, is just a, a huge added bonus and JDS Labs is definitely one of those companies so thanks to John for designing an awesome product and for standing behind it with awesome support. So I highly recommend that if you're looking for an amplifier, a portable amplifier, and if you're looking for a DAC with a new C5D, um, I highly recommend one of these two devices. I don't think anyone would be um, displeased with these. They're extremely high quality in reference, and I just can't say enough good things about them. JDS Labs C5 headphone amplifier, that concludes this review. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and thank you so much for watching.